obviously uh, the experiential economy would do well for your business. But my question is, for your, uh, how you read it, do those jobs come with a lot of wages? Well, you know, we're based in, in Portland, Oregon, which is a ground zero for the outdoor and recreational business, as well as the fitness business. We, uh, Portland is the headquarters for Nike, for the North American Adidas business. Under Armour has a presence there. And there's many other companies in addition to ours in Portland. So uh, we're, we're seeing uh, tremendous pressures, <clears throat> excuse me, on, uh, on wages in our hometown. But, you know, it's, it's a, an area, uh, as the charts showed, that people like to be in this business. And, uh, you know, there's, there's many other uh, benefits to, to working in the outdoor business, not just, uh, not just the location where we are. But there, there's steady employment, and um, it's a great business. So, so it certainly looks like a good business, so, but, but how is it evolving over your time there? I mean, what things are more popular? What do you need? What needs do you need, need to service more now to, than you did five, ten years ago? Well, you know, I noticed the, earlier in the segment you talked about the business in China, where we have a much more rapidly growing business than, than many others. And it's based on the fact that the Chinese government wants to dominate in the winter sports in the Olympics upcoming. So mm. they plan to open 300 ski areas uh, in China over the next several years. And the Chinese consumers are looking to the West for w what kind of apparel should they be wearing, what kind of footwear should they be wearing, and, and what, uh, you know, how, how can they emulate the Western um, sports scene. And so that's been great for our business, as well as our business in Europe, uh, which has been quite good. You know, um, in Europe, we have a different competitor in every local market. We don't really have a large, uh, mm. growing, uh, pan-European competitor. So uh, those markets have been quite good for us. So about 40% of our business is outside the U.S. And again, it's the outdoor business and the, the fitness and athletic business is really looks to, to America as, yeah. as a leader. So, Tim, talk me through sort of the, the employment picture uh, in this arena. How competitive is it? Uh, what's the barrier to, to entry if I'm, you know, a, a sophomore in college and I want to drop out and I want to sort of have the experiential economy instead? What's the barrier to entry for me? Well, I think they're, they're low in many of these areas. Uh, if you have a T-shirt company or a baseball cap company, you're in the apparel business and the outdoor business, frankly. Uh, the footwear business, much higher barriers to entry. But if you want to be a, a guide in the mountains, uh, or if you want to be a ski guide, or work in a ski shop, or in the industry, you know those those things are available. And and uh, you know young people have uh, less responsibilities financially and can can take on a job that, uh, as as you showed in one of the charts, that uh, where there's there's variability in the in the business model. So. Uh, there's lots of opportunity, and I think, frankly, the outdoor business uh, and this, the athletic business, people enjoy it, and uh, it's, a, it's a lifestyle play as, as well as almost anything else. Tim, one of the things we hear about a lot when it comes to jobs is a skills gap, that we don't have this kind of skills that we need, particularly in the tech area and things like that. Is that true in your neck of the woods, or are these basically skills like you learn to be a mountain guide by going out there and apprenticing? Well, I would, you know, mountain guiding, you learn by, by doing this stuff and being a fit uh, human being, uh, but when you're running a business as we are, it's addition. In addition to having those kind of requirements from an understanding standpoint, you need to be able to uh, have the ability to mine the data that exists to say, okay, uh, we may want to offer this particular style of garment, but what color does it need to be in? What's our sizing scale? Where does the merchandise need to be? Who's buying it? Uh, so there's there's multiple levels of sophistication in the business. Once you get beyond, hey, here's a great looking uh, jacket, and and how do we sell it?